So, the five match one day international series between India and Australia wrapped up last week and now the three match 2020 series is underway the first game of that series is over so there's just two more games to go before Australia's tour of India in the limited overs forms of cricket is finished and they can head back home for their Sheffield Shield for the approaching Ashes and so obviously the 2020 series hasn't come to an end so you can't really comment on it yet and the uh, game that did happen was uh, rain affected so there's nothing really to comment there as far as the one day series is concerned it pretty much happened as you would expect India are of course the number one one day international side in the world and they're playing at their home ground and it's in the springtime when they would have um, gotten a good rest mentally and physically over the winter it's not like it's the end of a long summer it's the beginning of one and um, pretty much India were at full strength except for a few exclusions here and there probably the biggest, the biggest exclusions were the two spinners Ashwin and Jadeja were both out of this series and so they had to play um, Chalal as the frontline spinner and um, Shikha Darwan was also not playing whether or not that was for injury or form I don't know so what is remarkable about India's performance is that they had a very inexperienced middle order uh, the people batting at 4, 5 and 6 were uh, newcomers who'd only been playing for the team for the last year or so. Uh, they had less than a thousand one day international runs under their belt, maybe 20 or so games. And um, they would have been, that would have been the weak point in which to target India because you had Rahane and um, Rohit Sharma opening the batting, Kohli at three, and then MS Dhoni batting at six or seven all the, the three big guns the four big guns and so the other three the other three much more inexperienced batsmen would have been the weak points and throughout these five match one day series India's middle order those three players pretty much performed very well scoring lots of runs and scoring them quickly which allowed um, that weakness to be basically paved over and England, India looked like a really mighty one day team it seemed like anyone who came to the wicket had the potential of making runs and so uh, Australia's bowlers were really up against it throughout the entire series as far as Australia's batting is concerned pretty much everyone who performed well has already been performing well for the last few years and there were no real surprises so the big run scorers were Finch, Smith and Warner batting at 1, 2 and 3 the people who were not didn't make as many runs it was um, the middle order of Maxwell Maxwell failed it and he got dropped and uh, they also brought in Hanscom who didn't score that many runs and Wade didn't score that many runs and Travis Head um, wasn't at his best he still scored a few runs he and very aggressively and he still maintained that his position at number four in this one day international lineup is justified but it wasn't anything amazing and so the people who made runs were the pe play exact players who had already been big run makers for Australia and whose positions in the batting order were already guaranteed and the very spots that were up for grabs 
with the other players who were coming in and out of the 11 were the ones who didn't do as well. I mean, there's a difference between, obviously, failing and doing okay. Peter Hansom did okay, scored a couple of reasonable starts, compared with Glenn Maxwell, who failed in his both opportunities. In both of his opportunities. And Matthew Wade, even after making a public statement where he said that he was aware of how he hadn't been making enough runs since his comeback into the, the Australian lineup in both Tests and One Day Nationals, and he needed to pick himself up, even after he made that public statement, he still wasn't able to do anything big. Throughout the one five match series, Australia was pretty much able to score big runs, but then India were able to score even bigger runs. So it was once again a very batsman friendly series, similar to what happened four years ago. Where 300 is the minimum score to be in the winning, in a winning position, and then you have to really expand upon that to go further. Similar exactly to um, what happened four years ago, where 350 could have been chased down and was. Probably the biggest worry for Australia is their bowling. They um, were unable to do anything to stop India's batting scoring those huge scores that allowed them to win the games. Pat Cummins was amazing, of course. Uh, he not only took lots of wickets, but he bowled, bowled um, reasonably economically. But um, the other thing is that, obviously, without Mitchell Stark and Josh Hazelwood, there's no real frontline um, fast bowling uh, plan that that um, Australia can get into in order to get early wickets with the new ball. That's why Pat Cummins bowled the first over of all the One Day Internationals. And um, Throughout this series, Australia was unclear about exactly what type of bowling attack it wanted to, pr to provide. They had James Faulkner play two of the games, batting at number eight as a bowling all-rounder. And then for the other three games, they had a normal lineup of three pace bowlers. And um, the other major pace bowler was, of course, Nathan Coulter Nile, who did a very good job. He's definitely shown himself to be in the contention to become a permanent member in the Australian 11. But the worst of the bowling was the fourth and fifth bowlers. This is where Australia leaked huge amounts of runs and they were unable to stop the Indian rampage. And the, the players responsible were uh, the spinners of Adam Zampa, uh, Travis Head, Glenn Maxwell. They were unable to do anything to stop the Indian batting, and also James Faulkner with his medium pace uh, Cutters. That was where most of the runs were leaked, and Australia pretty much lost the game based on that fourth and fifth bowler. And when you compare it to what India were able to do, particularly with the bowling of Chalal as the fourth frontline spinner. It was um, it was a huge difference what a really good spinner in those sorts of conditions was able to do.
but like I said in the introduction, the fact of the matter is that you're playing against the best team in the world in One Day Internationals at their home ground. It's hardly like you would have expected Australia to win this series. They didn't win it four years ago. It would have been a miracle for them to win it now. And they didn't. But they did win one game. And that was that's pretty much, you know, a reasonable outcome of what you would expect from them.